from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I'm left in a dilemma here. Uh, This is uh, a professional dilemma. And uh, rather than trying to fake my way through it or vamp, I'm just going to come clean with you and we'll see where this goes. I've been in this business my whole life. And I've talked to you occasionally about this business because many of you are curious. Although I, I really don't like to overdo it because my problems are not your problems. You just want to hear a fun show. You just want to hear a good show. You want to hear a show you can relate to, or whatever reason you tune in. But you don't tune in to hear my professional dilemmas. But I'm going to tell you this one. You know, I've lived um, in Los Angeles almost 20 years. And uh, I feel like I grew up here. I mean, uh, I'm going to live here forever. And no amount of natural disasters or craziness are going to chase me away. I will be here. I have lived here through riots, mudslides, earthquakes, crazy elections, recall elections. You get down the list. Crazy stuff. If you don't live in Southern California and you're listening now, I'm sure you watch it from afar and you laugh your ass off. But if you lived here, you'd understand why we live here and why we love it. And don't get me wrong. I love it here. Love it enough that I bought a house in the Hollywood Hills, spent a couple of million dollars renovating, and I'm going nowhere. I have been offered opportunities to leave, um, most notably to New York City. I've been offered opportunities to go to New York. I've turned those down. I've been asked to come to other places like Seattle. No. This is where I live. I'm happy to take the show on the road and do it for a week or even for a couple of weeks. But I live in Southern California. More specifically, I live in Los Angeles. And for all the craziness that we have here, there are many cities that have craziness. You pick your poison. This happens to be my favorite poison. I love it. But every once in a while in my job, and I have discussed this with other people who work in the radio business, there are certain things that are interesting and important that don't necessarily lend themselves to doing a radio talk show. Stuff happens that's big news or really bad, and it deserves hours and hours of television coverage. But when you get right down to it, what can you say about it on the radio? One of the secret ingredients, and I'm going to give you one of my secrets, the magician never lets you know the secrets of his magic tricks. You don't want to go behind the curtain with the Wizard of Oz, but I'm going to tell you one of the secrets of what I do. Part of my secret sauce is, number one, we try to stay away from stories on the front page of the newspaper. 
Because those get chewed up and spit out by the AM conservative talk stations, and we don't want to do that kind of radio. So we stay away from that stuff. We rarely read an op-ed piece on the air. We rarely interview a politician about anything. We rarely talk about politics, and we rarely talk about any story on the front page of the paper. Sometimes there's a story that's big that even I am concerned about, and I know you're concerned about it. But here's the secret of what I do. I generally don't talk about anything where there isn't what I call dramatic tension. And by dramatic tension, in this context, I mean this. When I throw something out to the listener to call in about, there has to be more than one answer to the question. More than one opinion. There have to be people in favor, people against, people who have opinions we haven't thought about. There has to be something people can argue about. That leaves out a lot of big stories. I came on the air here in Southern California shortly after a big fire in a high-rise downtown at what used to be called the First Interstate Bank Building. Does anybody remember that fire back in the 80s? It was on the 70th floor, some high up floor. And um, I said, much to the consternation of people calling in, that while that was an interesting story and tragic to the people in it, I didn't think it made for a radio talk show topic. Because everybody agrees it's a tragedy. Everybody agrees it's terrible. So it's the kind of story that makes for a good news story, and it's certainly, and whether it sounds tasteful to say this or not, this is what they're saying in the TV newsrooms anytime there's a fire. Makes for great video. It's compelling. But to me, it makes for lousy talk radio. Because who's in favor of the fire? There's only one opinion. It's tragic. It's terrible. People will be hurt. People will die. So as Larry King used to say, and again, it sounds cold and cruel, but in order to put on a good radio program, we have to ask questions like this. As Larry King would say, what's a question? What is the question? Fire, for or against? You can't do a talk show like that. Who's going to be in favor of fire? Who's going to say people got what they had coming to them? You're not going to say that. It's bad, bad, bad. Everything about it is bad. And any feeling human being would believe it's bad. Which takes us to today. I have just spent the weekend here in Southern California trying to do my normal round of activities in the weekend. But I kept being drawn back to the television. And as the weekend progressed... And as the Santa Ana winds kicked up to 60, 70 miles an hour in some places, and as the temperature exceeded 85 degrees in much of Southern California, area after area was hit by fire. Canyon country. Malibu. Irvine. Lake Arrowhead. I mean, the list goes on. Agua Dulce. I mean, the the longer the weekend went, the more places they were trying to show the fires on TV. And I have all kinds of feelings about it. For one, I'm human. It's compelling to look at. I lived here in Southern California during the riots in 1992. And they had curfews. You were supposed to be home by dark. Can you remember that? And if you can't, can you imagine a Los Angeles where you had to be home by dark and if you weren't, the police stopped you? I was stopped, by the way, because my radio show was on at the same time then as it is now. And so the police wanted to know why I was driving around that time of night. And when I told them my name, they let me go. But there were fires all over, in that case, the city of Los Angeles. 
And as tragic and terrible as it was, I will never forget sitting at home, cracking open a beer, and having the TV on 24 hours a day, listening to all the fire coverage on TV. Not because I was afraid my house was going to burn down, because I lived in the Hollywood Hills, and fortunately, during the riots, there were no fires in the Hollywood Hills. I was watching because I had that morbid fascination that people have watching the bright fires on TV. They'd, it's just compelling television. And when you're watching it, I mean, look, I'm just going to admit to being human. When you're watching this stuff, you're not thinking about the people who have to leave their possessions, their dogs and cats, run out of the house without clothes on or without being able to pack anything, all their memorabilia, all their photos, everything. They have to run. They don't know if they'll have a house when they come back. You're not thinking about that. You're thinking, my God. God, look at how bright that's burning. Wow. It's human nature. Unless the fire is heading for your house. And I have to believe there's people who are listening to me right now who've had this experience. You've sat there like me watching the video coverage on TV. Go, look at that. Wow. What a fire. Woo. That's great. And then one day you woke up and the fire was near your house. And suddenly it wasn't so funny or much or as much fun to watch anymore. I had a fire in the Hollywood Hills that was not far from my home, and I'm not talking about the one near the Hollywood side, I'm talking about another one. And unfortunately the fire began while I was on the air. And I found out what this feels like because I had to call neighbors those who would answer the phone and ask them to check and see if the fire was anywhere near my house. And I had to continue working while I was watching coverage of the fire on TV. Yikes! The dilemma is this. This is a big story, and it's been on my mind all weekend. It's been on every TV station. I'm looking at it right now. In fact, as I'm talking to you, the video of this case of fire in Valencia, it is, it's on in this studio right now. And human nature. This is not some shortcoming in me. I'm just honest enough to admit this. My eyes keep drifting over to the TV screen, and it looks like Valencia is burning down on TV. Valencia is uh, just uh, northeast of downtown, uh, it's actually northwest of downtown Los Angeles. Anybody who lives here in SoCal knows where Valencia is, the area near Magic Mountain. But uh, there is a huge fire there, and it's on television right now. And you have to wonder, as you're watching this stuff, you know, am I talking to people in the fires? Are there people driving around like uh, chickens with their heads cut off right now who are listening? What do you do with this? I mean, what is the question? What can you say about it? I mean, that's a problem for doing this kind of a radio program. Interviewing the public relations guy for the Valencia Fire Department like they do on TV does not make for compelling talk radio. And I'm not going to do it. Because it's not that interesting to the people who listen to a show like this. You know, telling people to uh, stay indoors. I mean, they keep giving me this warning. By the way, they're never very specific about where you should stay indoors. Southern California is a very big place. And I have seen today on Channel 2 here in Los Angeles more than once, along the bottom of the screen, they've got, of course, the requisite crawl. And it, it, there was a, a, a message telling everyone to stay indoors. Where? Everywhere? I don't live in the fire area. Should I stay indoors? You know, is there a problem with pollution? You know, ash or smoke? Or is it dangerous? Who knows? I don't know. I mean, now they're using the San Diego Charger Stadium, Qualcomm Stadium, as a 
an emergency area, like you can go in there and, and stay if your house is threatened. San Diego Wild Animal Park is closed. This is going on in San Diego, too. So in coming in here on a day like today, it's confusing. And rather than doing a shtick about it or making fun of people and their tragedy, which I, I really don't want to do, um, I just decided to come, as I occasionally do when I run into these dilemmas, to come forth to you and say this. I'm watching this on TV. I'm sure many people listening are watching this on TV. Even people who don't live in Southern California are seeing this on CNN or Fox News or other network news outlets. There are people watching this, people hearing Dean down the hallway yelling at the top of his lungs. There are people watching this right now. And or people have been watching it for the past three days. And uh, I'm sure that many of them are listening to the show right now. What do you say? What do you do? How do you make a talk show out of this? So I'm throwing myself on the mercy of the court right now. And all I'm going to simply do is give you the telephone number, and we're going to see where we go from here. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I have nothing but the greatest amount of appreciation, gratitude, and respect for what you're doing here. I really thank you. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like this show at one 800 5 town All right. Southern California is covered in fire. Now, you may not live here. You may be living in Dallas or one of the other cities that runs our show. Maybe you're telling yourself, why do I give a rat's ass? Well, I wouldn't even be talking about this, except it just looks like the entire region is on fire. I mean, you, every time you turn on the news, there's some other area burning up. It's out of control. Steve Futterman, of course, is a he's a reporter. Is that right? A correspondent, Tom. Correspondent, correspondent with CBS Radio News. Uh, uh, Steve, where are you? I'm at the what used to be Tom the Presbyterian Church off of uh, Malibu Canyon Road in Malibu, and uh, unfortunately, it burnt down yesterday. And it's not far from Pepperdine. Pepperdine was in danger, although the fire came close, but did not uh, really burn any significant parts of the campus. Maybe just the edges of the campus may have been uh, burned a little bit. But uh, uh, this is an area that was uh, 24 hours ago a a very dangerous area. But uh, now the fire has moved away from here. And uh, Malibu is now just one of 16, 17, 18 fires here in Southern California. Certainly it's getting the most publicity because it was the first of the fires that uh, we began covering and many of us have just stayed around here. But uh, uh, certainly it's not, uh, we don't think it's going to end up being the uh, the fire that we all remember. Only five homes have been destroyed, primarily because of very good uh, work by the fire department and lots of people are now uh, taking those uh, clearance uh, uh, ideas, you know, clearing the brush and uh, having sort of a buffer zone between their homes and the wilderness area. People are taking those uh, warnings to heart and uh, they they built sort of a buffer zone. Now, one of the things I think about as the average moron watching this on TV is this. When you see 10, 12, 15 different places where these fires are raging out of control, doesn't that fit out the ranks a bit among firefighters? I mean, yeah, it's just like... Oh, yes. Absolutely. And this is, uh, we had a news conference with uh, Schwarzenegger and some of the other officials uh, a few hours ago, and uh, they were saying that restore, you have to, it's like triage. You decide which area needs it most, and you put your effort there. But, uh, you know, they, they have uh, 16, 17 fires right now. Every, every person who is handling one of those particular fires wishes he or she could have 17, 18, maybe two dozen aircraft specifically focusing on that fire with the water droppings, with the repellent droppings, and they just have to sort of divide the aircraft, say, well, we'll, we'll allow this fire to have X number of aircraft, uh, this, this uh, fire here, X number of aircraft. They are asking for help from other states, so uh, California may get assistance from other nearby states as well. Now, um, I, I, we're used to seeing disasters in Malibu, for example, 
one after another, rock slides, mud slides, flooding. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, yes, yep. of course. Yep. Um, and we're also used to seeing fires in places like Big Bear or Lake Arrowhead. But imagine the shock when I turned on the TV last night and I'm seeing Irvine, which, which is a city, a fairly urban city in Orange County. <laughs> I mean, this is out of control. Well, it's, it's the winds, Tom, and, and the uh, Santa Ana winds, which, you know, we live here. We know that term, Santa Ana winds. It may not be uh, a term that flows off the tongues of uh, people outside of Southern California, but the Santa Ana winds come here every year, and this year it's sort of a bad combination. You have the Santa Ana winds. You had two years ago very heavy rain, which produced lots of vegetation. Then this past year, not much rain, which turned the vegetation into dry brush. Now you have the fires, and guess what the fires are burning? All of that brand new dry brush. Unbelievable. So I don't know if we're better off having no rain at all or uh, turning into a rainforest. I don't know well, which, which is better. The best is just to have a, a moderate rain, rainy season and a moderate uh a hot season. You, know, you just want moderation. You don't want these extremes because there's a price you pay with the extremes, obviously. Now, Steve, you lived here longer than I. I've only been here 20 years in L.A., but... Uh, uh, but <laughs> I was born here, so I've been here like five years longer than that, Tom. Ah, there we go. Exactly. This. Uh, now, let me ask you this question. This, this is not as bad as it... This is worse than it used to be, isn't it? Well, yes and no. I'll tell you this. Uh, the fact that at least as of yesterday... Only five homes in Malibu uh, were, were destroyed. That is a relatively small number compared to how powerful this fire was. Back in uh, 93, I think, was the last really, really big fire here in Malibu. I think we had two, 300 homes completely destroyed. There are ways people deal with this now, obviously, with, as I mentioned, they put up these buffer zones around their, their homes. They're required to, and uh, the county now enforces these requirements. So there are new ways with dealing uh, with fires. But uh, in some ways, this has not been nearly the disaster it could be. Now, I am hearing, uh, and this is uh, not anything I've confirmed right now, but I am hearing reports that lots of homes have been destroyed in the Lake Arrowhead area. Perhaps up to 100 homes may have been destroyed there. So it doesn't I mean everything's going smoothly but uh for the number of fires we've had for the size of the fires for the intensity of the winds many of these fires have not had the uh the, the toll you would you would expect as far as structures and homes now as i watch these uh, uh pictures on television yeah the first thing i think uh, as someone who's not a journalist is right these people are insane going oh. out there i heard at one point last night one of these fires was moving one mile every five minutes. Uh, well, who goes into the middle of that? Well, you yeah, and others. Why? Well, I don't feel I'm... I, I have not felt I've been in danger at all. Uh, so, I mean, if I felt I was in danger, I would uh, say, well, Tom, I took a chance. I have never felt in danger in any of these fires, and at times I've been right up against the fires. Uh, you always uh, know where you want to go next. You don't want to get caught in certain situations, and I think we all have that in the back of our minds. But I've never felt uh, in any danger at all, and I've covered situations where I was very scared. Uh, certain uh, uh, certain protests against certain Chinese governments, for example, in yes. uh, 19, 1989 when gunshots were being fired. I, I do get scared. That did scare me. This did not scare me. Another thing, uh, Tom, the only thing that bothers me is, the smoke gets to you. So, I mean, that does bother me. But uh, as far as being in any immediate danger that uh, the fire is going to overtake me, and, of course, you never say never, but uh, I'm always aware of where I'm at, and I think all my colleagues are as well. CBS Radio News Cub reporter uh, Steve Futterman joining us. Correspondent, Tom. Correspondent, Correspondent yes, yeah. uh, from Malibu. Uh, that's had an awful lot of fire. Uh, now, uh, another thing that I'm noticing in watching the news, Steve, i got to tell you, there's an awful lot of fascination, and this is not the first time because we've, we've had fires in Southern California many times in many places, uh, but it seems to me like there is this incredible fascination with whether the homes threatened are, quote-unquote, expensive homes. I know, I know. What is that all about? Somehow, I mean, I use it in my stories, too. Uh, there was this uh, home that was sort of a, uh, a castle-like home. And I did mention in my reports, a few of my reports, that the home was estimated to be worth 
seventeen million dollars. It's sort of like you know you mention when you do stories about Alex Rodriguez, you report his salary in there. When you do the story on, uh, oh God, uh, give me a journeyman player. Uh, uh, I don't know. on the Dodgers, Julio Lugo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Used to be on the Dodgers. Yeah, you mentioned Lugo. You don't uh, necessarily mention his salary. I think sometimes you get uh, there's a connection between what a home is worth. People can relate to the fact that this is an expensive home. It does add to what this home is all about. So I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I also understand why we do uh, use the term expensive homes, million-dollar homes, uh, that type of thing. In I sometimes wonder whether it's... Uh, because we think those homes are more important because they're more expensive, or it's to report to the people who can't afford expensive homes like uh, those rich people. You think they're happy? Look at their houses burning down. I, it's one or the other. You know, I don't know if it's either one, but I will say this. There is something very democratic about uh, fires, I've always felt, in any natural disaster, because you can have the richest person in the world and the poorest person in the world both suffer complete losses on the same day. Uh, the fires don't pick and choose. Well, we don't know if they pick and choose, because I'll tell you, some of the, the patterns you see sometimes are very bizarre. Last night, after covering the Malibu fire, I went over to uh, the fire near Magic Mountain in Canyon Country, and uh, there was this one man on the left side of his house was a house completely destroyed. On the right side of his house was a house completely destroyed in his house was just fine. His name is Geraldo Diaz. I met him last night. He told me that once, one time he went to a religious retreat, and when he came back, he built an altar in his house. And last night, he said he had a feeling that was a smart move. Was, was Magic Mountain operating last night? Don't I? You know, I didn't go to. I didn't go by there last night. I, I was just curious if you know the Superman roller coaster or whatever they had there. Uh, just curious if that was operating with sixty mile an hour winds and fire all around. And you know they they've got fire revenue. Ride, wouldn't it? They've got revenue concerns there. You know they they might want to stay open for business. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you have to leave your house, so maybe they would. People would say, "Where where should we go? Maybe to Magic Mountain." You ask where all these people leave. Maybe they can go to Magic Mountain. I was imagining people going with their, you know, saving up their coke cans to get the five dollar discount and uh, arriving at the front uh, yeah. gate at Magic Mountain and saying, "I don't care if there's fire, I want in." What's your favorite ride there, Tom? <laughs> I I haven't been there in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know. Uh, just just haven't been there in a while. All right. Uh, not gonna it's make safe. I hear I hear it's safe, so you can go there in the future. You mean because for, safe from fire or safe from other elements? Uh, safe from fire. I right, just checking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Glad to hear that. All right. Well, Steve, thank you so much for taking time out of your very smoky schedule. Always great to be with you, Tom. Uh, love hearing you on the air, and great to be on your show. Of course it is. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. There goes uh, CBS Radio News correspondent Steve Futterman reporting from Malibu, uh, which was on fire last night. All right, your telephone calls are coming up next. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I might be, as you say, hormonal to where it might be nothing, and I'm just making something big out of it. By the way, by the way, you know how you make a hormone, right? <laughs> Tell me. Don't pay her. <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. The Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likey Show. 1 800 500 Tom is our telephone number. Oh, we can't ignore it. We cannot ignore it. All the fires all over Southern California. Dozens and dozens of big fires. Looks like the whole place is burning down. Nona on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up? Uh, the ratings Tom. and my paycheck last I looked. Good. Sounds good. Yeah, so listen, we were actually at Magic Mountain yesterday, and it was really, it really, really, really... Wait a minute. You were at Magic Mountain? Yep. And Did you have to drive through the fire to get there? 
Well, no. Now, we, we got there really, really early. And um, this is the thing, though. We were in line for, like, two hours to get on a ride. And then it turns out, oh, they closed it, you know, like. So then we go on an, another ride, and we'd be in line for, like, two, two and a half hours, whatever. And then they'd say, okay, you know, we have to close this one down, too. So they were closing all the big rides. And, you know, so there was really no point of being there. We just, we got on the little, like, you know, the lame little carnival rides because all the big ones were getting closed. Weren't you and, even slightly concerned about, let, let's forget the fires for a second, winds of 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. Uh, now, I know you want to scare yourself going on a roller coaster, but <laughs> but uh, honestly speaking, don't you think there'd be some added danger being at the top of a roller coaster in a place where the wind is 60 miles an hour? We weren't really thinking about that because you know how sometimes oh, when you're in line, you're inside. God. There's, you know, you're indoors. But like dear, the, the winds, the winds, the, Saturday night, the winds were like that. Yeah, it was pretty. I mean, the, you know, like once we saw like the tree branches like falling all over the place, and you know, everybody's had you know dirt in their eyes, and you know, people were like with red faces, and you know, we just decided to leave. And I think they were going to close down early too, anyway. But, but didn't you see all the fires on TV? I mean, you, even your favorite show was preempted for a while by showing fire on TV. We don't watch. Um, you know, we never watch TV. So you know, you I never watch like TV. You never wait. You never watch TV, or you never Not watch really the no. news. I hardly ever watch TV. <laughs> really? So, yeah. do, do, do the fires? You hadn't heard about them? No, until my sister-in-law told me. She's the one that mentioned it to me, and I was like, "Oh, well." You're okay. not. You're not voting next year, are you? Am I what? You're not voting next next year, are you? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I would hate to think you were actually going to register to vote. Oh no. 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 Mm -mm. And, and now that I've gone this far, the reason okay. you're not going to register to vote is what? Um, it's, well, it's personal. I don't want to say it on the radio. No, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're anonymous. Yeah. You can tell us. How did, wait, wait. How do we go from talking to the wind and being a I Just now vote? that I heard this, well, it's very rare that you talk to a woman who's 26 years old. You've been eligible to vote for eight years who will admit right up front she's not voting. So I just wanted well, to find out why. Here. I haven't lived here for a long time. Are you a, are you a citizen? I am. All right. So you have the right to vote. I do. So why not vote? Um, it's just I don't agree with you know. There's it's just well actually you know what I I vote sometimes. Yes, but, not, but we like, have a, a presidential election. You mean you, no. you're not you don't vote during presidential elections in general or just this one? Um, lately. Lately. The last yeah. Well, you've only been eligible to vote in two. Two yeah. And you've well, the last one, and I the think. reason you don't vote for the president is what? It's just, I, uh, you know, people say, oh, it's the lesser of two evils. You know, if you vote Democrat or I, I don't like either party. I don't, you know, associate with either of the parties. So you don't vote? Uh-uh. Okay. Do you know who's running? Do I know? This time, yeah. No, do you know who's I know running? I Hillary, Obama. Yeah, yes. I mean, I follow. I follow, but I just, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to vote or not. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but if you don't watch, if you by the way, if you don't watch the news, I really would rather you not vote. Just for the record. No, I mean I don't watch it on TV. I do um, go online and check out the news, and you know I listen to the radio. How do you go to Valencia in the middle of these fires and not know there are fires? No, I mean I I didn't. We really didn't care. I mean we really didn't think it was that bad when we were left. When you we didn't left think it was that bad. Mm mm. Not until we were there already. It was already late. I that's mean, we were already be that's there. because you don't watch the news. That's probably you... why. I mean, not, not on the weekends. I really don't watch the news on the weekend, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just thought I'd check. All right, Tom. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Tom, why don't you talk about the important issues more often? Why don't you talk about something important? That's why. That's why. That's that's the reason, right? There it is. I can't crystallize it any better. I'm taking the path of least resistance, baby. Like these fires. <laughs> you know, moving one mile every five minutes. That's what I'm doing. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Albert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Albert. Okay, I got some input on these fires. I used to work for CDF, uh, Department of Forestry, for three years. Yes. While I was incarcerated, okay? Now, the problem is these fires don't happen just like that. 
these top officials have their people to go set these fires. The, 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 so, so, they, so the fire department is out setting fires. Pretty you, much. You've got proof of this. Uh, actually, not proof, but I talked to a captain, my captain that I was really close to, and he gave me some insight of... Really? Did he, he assign you to go out and set fires? No. Why not? No. Because, like I said, I was, you know, I was incarcerated at the time, and uh, we used to go fight on the fire line. You know what I mean? And if you notice, these fires happen at this time of the year. Well, th th and why do you think that is? This is the uh, corruption time of year? Why? Uh, I don't know. I guess they got to make their money. You know what I mean? You know, when the fires are, are going, you know what I mean? It's when they make more money instead of, you know, sitting down. They make or, more money setting. How do you make money setting a fire? Because you're out there on the fire line fighting these fires. So the state has to pay. So why would you make more money in October setting a fire than you would, say, in July? Not basically in October. You said this time of year. It's, it's towards the end of the year. So they set fires now, what, so they'll have more money for Christmas shopping? Uh, I don't know. Well, you I just said it's this, this time this of year for a reason. But, this, but this isn't what, isn't this, the reason because there's Santa Ana winds, because there's a lot of dry brush out there? Yeah, but, you know, they, they, they know when to set fires. They know, they know when, when to set fires. They know when to set fires because of the winds. And the weather and stuff like that. Oh, but you just said that there's something interesting about the timing of the fires. What? What's so interesting about it? What's? Uh, I have no idea. You have no idea. Why'd you no. say that? Why did I say that? Yeah. Because what the? You pointed the, what, out the time of year. I want to know why. I don't know, but we're. we're why? Why'd you say? Well, you said it. You just said that to me. Yeah. You didn't you say that? Yeah. And now I'm asking you why, and now you're saying you didn't say it. Did you say it or didn't you say it? Thank you. <laughs> Idiot. Tom, why don't you talk about the important issues? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today, buddy? Doing great, Mike. You know what, Tom? I've listened to you for a long time. I know you're a closet fireman, and uh, you always wanted to be one. And uh, maybe you could do a little public service announcement and tell, like, that uh, young lady who went up to Magic Mountain that, uh, you know what, she's doing a real disservice to not only all the people that are up there that are trying to get through those roads, but also the firefighters that are trying to get rigs and, and supplies and everything up there to help uh, these people save their homes and everything. And and I uh, appreciate if you could put a little word out there that these people don't need to be in that area, that they need to stay out of it, because a lot of times these uh, secluded areas like Malibu or any of the ones that are down in Orange County, very limited access to get in and out of those roads. And these people like this gal here are not paying attention to anything. How could you be out on the road today uh, and not realize that there's uh, smoke smell, there's ambers and ashes everywhere, and we need people to kind of do that just because of, Maybe it's nothing to do with them as far as their house is burning, but we got a lot of people with their lives on the line, and we need those roads wide open. And we appreciate you uh, putting that out there to these guys to stay out of those areas because it's a life and death situation. Absolutely. Maybe. And let me ask you a question. Don't there has to be just like when OJ was on the road and everybody was coming out to the overpasses to cheer him because they were watching TV. There have to be people watching TV who get in their cars, these morons, and try to drive out to these places to see it in person. You got it. I saw that one, too. But today I'm driving uh, in Long Beach, and I'm in between. If you couldn't smell the fires in here, and all you got to do is look at your vehicle. If it's been parked there more than two minutes, there's ashes all over it. And, uh, you know, uh, Orange County and Long Beach and L.A. have a lot of smog, but you got to have some kind of common sense to realize this is a lot more than that. So, uh, you know what, Tom, and I appreciate, bud, you're doing a great job out there. And I, uh, a lot of people are down on you, but I know you put out those public service announcements, and I knew a long time ago that uh, if you weren't going to be a radio guy, you'd be riding one of those fire rigs. Mike, I think you're right about that. Thank you for the call. It's the Tom Likas Show.